Hey, what's up everyone? So it's time for a new video about iOS app security and the good practices of secure coding. As you can see, this time I'm not alone. I have Anastasia with me. Welcome, Anastasia. Hi, hello, security. So today we are going to talk about two common misconceptions that we can very easily have uh, whenever we need to store some sensitive information within an iOS app. So here, the example that I'm taking is that let's imagine I have an app and my app needs to connect with an external API. So I'm going to need at some point a way to authenticate with this API. So there are several ways to do it. Uh, it can be with an API key, it can be with a token, for instance. And here, this is what's happening. So the person who exposes the API has provided me with a token. As you can see, it's here. It's a JWT token. And well, basically, as an iOS developer, I need to have this token available in my app in order to make my network calls. So what I chose to do here was to create a configuration file, so configuration.plist, and then to add the token in this plist. It works because the token is just a string, but now the question that I want to ask Anastasia is, is it really safe to store this kind of sensitive information within a configuration file that is stored within your app? What do you think? And of course, we know the answer. It's not safe. So basically, anything that you store in your application, especially in a files, especially in a playlist file, can be readable uh, because it's part of the application bundle. So anyone can install this application from App Store, then decode it, decrypt it, and read the data that you store there in a playlist. Let's show how it works. Let's show it. So I think the reason we can have this misconception is because, well, when you download an app from the App Store, the app is indeed encrypted. But as you said, it's very easy using a tool like Frida to get the content of the app unencrypted. So when you do it, you get a file like this. So here is the name of my app dot IPA. So IPA is the extension of an iOS file. And actually it's just an extension. And so if I rename my file and I change the extension to zip, so now that I have my zip file, well, I can just unzip it. And we can see that indeed the unzip was successful. And so we have this payload directory. Inside the payload, we have an executable. So as you can see, it cannot be run because of course it's meant for iOS and not for macOS. But in this file, well, I can do right click, show content of package. And then once I am inside, as you can see, I have access to absolutely all the resources of the app, they are unencrypted, and it also includes my configuration file. So I can double click on it. Yeah, and here it is. And here it is, and here is the data. So it's like you said, basically anything that we store inside the resources of our app, well, basically we can consider it to be public. It's just like as if we were just hosting it on a web server that is available to anyone, right? Yeah, yeah. And as you say, of course, it will require a little bit of work to, to decode and decrypt this application once you uh, download it from the App Store. But it's not an issue. It's not a problem. As far as I know, you can do it even if you don't have jailbroken device, right? So anything, basically anything that is part of your application bundle, it's public. It's a public information. Yeah, a little bit tricky to get it, but still it's a public information. And this is important because everything you put there uh, affects basically all users of your application, right? So if you decide to put something secret there, you will reveal a secret that all users of your application use. And of course, uh, we know where is the correct way to store data like that. I guess it would be so. I guess maybe the naive way to wrongly solve the issue would be to say, well, I'm just going to put the string in my code and it's not going to be an issue. But there are also ways to get all the static strings within a file. So I guess we're going to say that the correct way to deal with the issue is to have some obfuscation on your executable. Yeah, I'll start it into keychain, like, you know, on a first, uh, on a first run of the application, you read sensitive data, you put it into keychain, things like that. Basically, it depends on what kind of secret. If you want to store a particular user session, a particular token for a particular user that your application received during transmission to a backend, of course, you uh, generate this token, you receive this token during runtime, so you can easily put it to keychain. If you want to hide some information, some tokens that you receive in advance while you're building an application, it's a good way to do it is to use obfuscation, to split this token, just not to put it as one string. And always remember that this is a public string, even if it looks like it's encrypted. And this is our second point for today. Yes. 
And the second point is that when you take a look at this string, so the token, as you can see, it's not human readable. And the second common, we could say, misconception is that we tend to assimilate that not human readable is the same as encrypted. And of course, it's not the case at all. And to show it to you, I'm going to actually copy the content of the token. And now, as you can see, I'm on the website of JWT, so JWT.io, and they have a debugger section. And in this section, as you can see, I can just paste a token. So I have pasted my token. And as you can see, the website was able to decode it. And of course, the website was able because actually this information here in red and then here in purple, it's not actually encrypted but it's actually base64 encoded. And there is a big difference between the two, right? Yes, yeah, so JWT tokens, which are right now used really a lot for authentication, they're not encrypted. This is just a JSON, like three small JSONs combined into one large string. And of course, we don't want to send JSON, we just encode it. So it looks like a long, long string, but in reality, it's simple plain text JSON. And the trick here that often JWT token is used to authenticate exact user, you know, so you need to know who the user is. And many developers, unfortunately, instead of relying on user ID, something long that looks like ID, you know, they put email or exactly. name. Yeah, they put some user data which of course with GDPR, CCPA and other privacy regulation, it's, I would say, not desirable, right? Because in a nutshell, what is happening in this example, we just send the name of our user and email of our user every time when application makes request to a backend. So basically this data is goes every time in plain text here and there. Exactly. And it could be even worse because here, after all, the token was a way for the app to authenticate. So if the name and the email are indeed stored in the token, well, we could very well imagine that it could reveal some information about the developer of the app, or it could be like a technical email address that could then be used for a phishing attack or anything like this. So you really want to be careful and definitely not assume that because something is not used human readable that it is encrypted because it might very well well not be the case yeah we will link uh, a wasp guide to jwt tokens which will explain what to put there what not to put there the basic idea is don't put secret data there don't don't put personal information there if you need to identify a user and you need just use user id so what should you take away from this video? I guess the main takeaway is the fact that every single resource of your app is public and you should not yes. store anything that is sensitive in the content of your app because you can assume that basically as soon as your app is published on the App Store, anyone out there has access to the entire content of the app. I guess that's number one. Absolutely. Right? And then number two is that, well, if you have some data that you are thinking is encrypted, you should actually try it and make sure that it is indeed actually encrypted for real and not encoded. Maybe we can just say a few words about the difference between encoded and encrypted. Yeah, so encoding is just a transforming data to a different format. In this example, we transformed uh, data into base64, which uses less number, less symbols less uh, like characters are allowed in base64 space right so encoding can also mean that we will take this uh letters these characters and for each character for example we can find s key code like a number that represent this character this is encoding we don't change the information we just change the representation of this information right if we are feeling creative we can create a nice and uh, small cat image for each letter this is encoding we don't change the information encryption it's a it's different it actually changes the information encryption uses something some formula how to change information often these formulas are based on rotations and xors and they use a key what we call the encryption key right so and encrypting data means that something was happening with this data with some formula and some key and if you know this exact formula and key you can decrypt the data back right and there are different kind of formulas we know them as ciphers so if you need to encrypt uh, any information 
and this is symmetric encryption, feel free to use IS GCM256, which is one of the most popular ciphers for symmetric encryption. But don't use base64, because this is just encoding. And not encryption. I think we've all learned the lesson from this video now. So we've actually covered a lot of information in this video. We've talked about tools like Frida. We've talked about techniques like encryption. Of course, we could not go into the details because otherwise the video would have been, well, way too long. But we have put a lot of links in the description. So if you want to learn more about the things we have just mentioned in the video, well, please go look down there in the description. I'm sure you will find all the links to learn more about these topics. And on my side, well, I just have to say thank you, Anastasia, for being with me for this video. Thank you. Always happy to help to make your applications more secure. And well, thank you all for watching and see you next time for another video. Bye. -bye.